uh, I'm going to talk about the recent achievements of the Quarks collaboration. And uh, Quarks uh, is uh, an experiment funded by Ayana Fan uh, to it's a heloscope search to probe the uh, 8.511 gigahertz frequency range at GFZ sensitivity. And uh, it's uh, um, composed that the search will be conducted with uh, two different heloscopes. Uh, one will be located uh, in Legnaro, near Venice, and the other one is located in the Legnaro, in the Fescato Laboratory, which is next to Rome. And these two uh, heloscopes uh, are planned to operate in different mass ranges. And uh, the basic idea is to rely on uh, uh, completely different also uh, read cavity readout technologies. I'm talking about both uh, traveling wave parametric amplifiers and single microwave photon detectors. So the strategy is, uh, uh, and the strength of the lab is that of uh, building and construction and testing a high quality factor cavity, and then have um, the uh, readout uh, devices uh, uh, from groups that are involved in quantum information fields, so from quantum computing, uh, quantum engineering uh, uh, devices. And mainly from the um, uh, group of uh, Nicolas Roch in Saclay, and uh, uh, the uh, Quantronics group uh, um, with Patrice Berthet, Manuel Florence, um, so, yeah, there was in the Neal Institute, sorry. So, um, Quox is, uh, is a name that stands for Quest for Actions, uh, and it's the name that we originally gave uh, to the Ferry Magnetic Heloscope, the one in which you exploit uh, the interaction of the action with the electron spin. Uh, the um, Quox has been funded, this activity uh, continues as an R&D uh, project uh, and uh, um, INFN has funded the development of the um, conventional, let me call it that, uh, heloscope in which uh, uh, you rely on the conversion of the axon uh, into a photon within uh, um, uh, a resonator under a, an intense magnetic field. And in this uh, roadmap table, you can get an idea of the different ranges that will be covered by the two different heloscopes. And uh, um, we plan to have uh, a few megahertz uh, uh, per day uh, scanning rate by uh, using uh, dielectric cavities in the Legnaro laboratory and using hybrid superconducting cavities for the Frascati lab. Frascati is also planning uh, to operate a multi-cavity heloscope, whereas in LNL, in LNL we might get the KFZ sensitivity with a, with a single cavity with a dielectric concept. I haven't talked about that in a while. Um, yeah, this is the outline of my talk. Uh, I'd like to report about uh, uh, the data analysis of uh, um, a scientific round that we did in 2021, July, uh, using the dielectric resonator that we uh, presented uh, in the past uh, uh, Patras workshop. And then uh, I'd like to tell you something about uh, the characterization of uh, the receiver uh, of the uh, Quox experiment and that is uh, sees as a preamplifier, a traveling wave parametric amplifier. This same amplifier uh, has been used uh, for a, a scientific run, uh, again connected uh, uh, to read out the dielectric cavity, and I will show also something also about that test. And then um, I'd like to share some uh, preliminary results that we got uh, uh, with the single microwave photon detectors. So, a couple of words on the dielectric uh, cavity. This is essentially a copper cavity, as you see in this picture, with some dielectric shells. I'm talking about sapphires, which has very low tangent loss, so it's convenient um, material to go to high cubes. It's, uh, as you've seen in the previous talk, it's not a completely new uh, concept. Uh, it's also called dielectric boosted uh, resonator concept. Uh, in which uh, uh, the cavity fields are reshaped in such a way that uh, the fields are suppressed at the copper boundaries, so uh, very large quality factors can be obtained, especially in the two shells configurations that you see has been implemented in our lab. But in this case, uh, the evanescent field, uh, the boundaries, is suppressed at a level that you uh, can reach quality factors as high as, as 10 millions, so exceeding uh, by factor 10 the axon quality factor uh, uh, at uh, arbitrary large uh, magnetic fields, as you can see in this plot. Uh, the drawback 
in this configuration with the two trials is that uh, the form factor, as you exploit the uh, higher order modes, can be uh, um, very low, uh, order of uh, 0.03. So we are testing a new version, uh, which is something we knew, but we are testing a new version with uh, um, a form factor which is comparable to the um, one uh, that can be uh, achieved with the um, conventional uh, uh, right uh, cylindrical cavities uh, in the uh, fundamental mode, the transverse magnetic 010 mode. Uh, in this case, uh, the quality factor is uh, a little bit lower and we expect to reach uh, 1 million, so to match the axiom quality factor with the one-shell configuration. But you can see uh, the scaling uh, uh, of the scan rate depends on the square of the C, so it's a very convenient uh, configuration. Um, a few words on the run that we did with di this dielectric cavity. So we have uh, cooled it uh, to uh, liquid helium temperature. And uh, uh, just to, as a first uh, test uh, to, to see uh, uh, what are the requirements, what are the um, uh, involved uh, in the utilization of such a high quality factor cavity in a haloscope, uh, which has uh, never been uh, uh, reported in the literature. And uh, um, so we uh, started with a cryo hemp. A readout, uh, and we acquired the data in uh, three different uh, um, uh, uh, configurations uh, corresponding to different quality fa uh, loaded quality factors. So by changing the position of the tunable antenna, we could change the coupling coefficient from uh, the condition of critical coupling up to uh, more than 14 uh, beta. And uh, uh, unfortunately, during this run, I realized that the crime hemp was not working properly. As you see, we measured the system noise temperature exceeding uh, 17 Kelvin. Uh, so the, uh, after the run, the uh, amplifier was sent for repair. But in any case, uh, uh, the, the take home message here is that even though you have a very bad, very noisy receiver as the one that we employed for this search with such a, a high quality factor cavity one can uh, really uh, reach a cosmologically relevant sensitivity uh, as shown uh, in this plot. So um, maybe the most important information here is that we um, identified some system, some significant uh, um, systematics in the uh, uh, data and the acquisition that we did uh, for uh, high quality factors. So uh, this result that I'm showing here has been obtained by uh, all, only for the data in the third configuration. So with a quality factor actually of uh, uh, 300,000, uh, okay. So system X is mainly involving uh, the fact that we were uh, in, a, in, uh, in a liquid helium uh, vessel. So this uh, this is, uh, uh, say, a rather uh, uh, important result because, uh, yeah, it's been obtained with a very bad, as I mentioned, receiver, but uh, also in, um, uh, in a uh, mass which is uh, uh, currently not uh, accessible to other experiments. So let's improve on uh, cavity readout. We have started to test this uh, traveling wave parametric amplifiers that have been developed by the uh, group of Nicolas Rock in Grenoble. And uh, they are, uh, I would say, uh, leading experts uh, in these fields, especially for the development of these devices at high frequency. As you see, uh, the, our cavities resonate around 10 gigahertz, and there are not so many uh, uh, devices available in that frequency range, especially because uh, losses increase in the uh, substrate of the, um, of the devices, and uh, uh, it's even more difficult to go to a higher frequencies. So uh, why two pass uh, in action search? Uh, as we've seen, uh, the cavities need to be to probe the maximum parameter, the, the highest parameter space, and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, um, this is uh, possible uh, if uh, I mean this is more easily done if uh, um, wide bandwidth amplifiers are. Uh, uh, used for readout, and I'm talking about uh, a 10 gigahertz uh, requirements of uh, gigahertz uh, uh, amplification bandwidth. 
oh, well, AMPT can give very large uh, amplification bandwidths. Uh, the, when you want to go uh, next to the quantum limit using these Josephson junction based uh, ampli parametric amplifiers, the problem is that they are narrow bandwidth. And this problem can be solved by uh, using a, a um, can be solved in the two-part configuration. So uh, here is uh, uh, the, the, the scheme that uh, they have implemented, and you can see more uh, the details in these references. And uh, uh, if this, uh, please note that there's a quantum limit here, and that they measured uh, uh, um, the noise temperature uh, of uh, um, photons uh, in a rather large uh, uh, frequency band. So uh, this is uh, uh, the amplifier in the isolated, um, uh, measured in the isolated system. Uh, if we uh, want to test it in a cry in the in an amplifier setup, uh, uh, these are uh, the various steps uh, to cool it down in the dilution refrigerator. And uh, uh, we have uh, uh, done the preliminary test using an eight Tesla magnet, even if in the 2023 Quox will be equipped with a 14 Tesla magnet. So the base temperature of this uh, uh, dilution refrigerator is at uh, 50 millikelvin with a very uh, rather large cooling power. So I can point you to uh, the work we did uh, uh, to test uh, this parametric uh, um, amplifier. This is a new method that we introduced. It's a reliable calibration scheme uh, which allows for measuring the noise temperature exactly at the output of the cavity, and we don't need any switch uh, nor heat load methods. So just uh, relying on uh, recording spectra and uh, making linear fits. You can see the details on this work, which has been recently accepted on review scientific instruments. So we got to uh, measure again for this two amplifier of the order of 24 dBs uh, with the uh, um, noise temperature, uh, which exceeds uh, the, um, uh, the, the quantum limit. Um, uh, the level given by the quantum limit, but uh, that is typical in, uh, uh, in parametric amplifiers. So yet they, they don't uh, reach the uh, quantum limit. So that's for Lina, what we did for Lina amplification. Uh, this is when you rely on uh, um, these two um, quadratures of uh, these two observable that you do not commute, which are the two quadratures of the uh, electromagnetic fields in the cavity. And, uh, um, of course, as uh, stated also in previous pre uh, presentations, uh, a game changer is there if we use uh, phonon counting techniques, especially at high frequencies, as uh, uh, the uh, quark oscilloscope uh, is, and uh, at low temperatures. So, uh, but it's not only a, a question of uh, bosonic occupation, it's also a question of uh, real devices. So these devices exhibit uh, dark count rates. Uh, um, I mean, the practical ones that, uh, that are becoming available in the, la in the last few months. And, uh, uh, but uh, one can already show, if we compare the signal to noise ratio with the two different techniques, I'm talking about linear readout with just some parametric amplifiers and uh, utilization of single photon encounters. You can uh, really see directly that even with uh, 100 hertz uh, dark count rate, one uh, really has quantum advantage in this type of experiments. And strong motivation is there in our group uh, uh, to pursue this, uh, to use this, to have these uh, uh, devices uh, for cavity readout, also for the ferromagnetic scaloscope in which the signal is even smaller than one, it, one uh, expects in the action to uh, photon conversion. So what do we need uh, to, 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 to build a uh, SMPD uh, for a haloscope search? This is a um, very challenging device to be developed uh, compared to SMPDs that are meant uh, to detect cavity photons. So in this case, uh, the uh, readout has to be remote uh, because of the intense magnetic fields that are involved. <laughs> And we have be become interested in the past few years in uh, uh, two 
uh, solutions, one which relies on the uh, utilization of uh, artificial atoms, the uh, transmon qubits and circuit quiddy, and uh, another one uh, which has already also been mentioned in this workshop uh, on, uh, based on a car and bias just junction, the idea pushed by uh, Leonie Kutbin. So what's uh, uh, just a couple of words about, from an unknown expert uh, of quantum uh, qubits. What's a, uh, what's a transmon qubit? It's just a two-level system. Uh, I mean, nature gives us atomic atoms in which uh, naturally the two-level system is realized. And to make it in the, um, in the context of uh, uh, superconducting circuits, uh, one uses the transmon because uh, if one uses the simple LC uh, oscillator, uh, uh, that is not uh, a good approximation of, of a two-level system. So by adding a nonlinear and a nonlinearity in the circuit, which is given by the Josephson junction, uh, one uh, realizes a transmit qubit. So just zero seconds, <laughs> just to say the working principle. So you have the photon that comes from the uh, cavity. Uh, through a transmission line, so it's, it's a, uh, an excitation of a transmission line, and for detection you want to trans convert that in an excitation of the qubit. So if you just, uh, so you insert a cavity in the cavity QAD environment in which uh, you want to enhance the interaction between the uh, transmon and qubit and the photon, and the incoming photon. So that is not uh, such an efficient process. So what they do, they try to rely on these four wave mixing processes in which you add an additional cavity and uh, you pump the qubit at a certain frequency to satisfy this uh, condition. So this is what the device that has been developed by the controlling groups in, um, in CEA, Sacle. And here you can see the details of the device. The typical scheme that you implement for quantum sensing, which is uh, um, repeated, uh, repeated uh, several times. And this is what uh, we are uh, going to do in October. We are going to mount uh, our cavities, uh, our magnets uh, in their dilution refrigerator and use the device to read out uh, the, um, the cavity. So it will be a pilot experiment with an iobin titanium cavity. You can see the Q quality factor that we realized. The important thing is that we will be at three Tesla where the, uh, the um, Magnet the realized uh, has been uh, uh, designed to work, and uh, the search will be conducted at seven, around seven gigahertz. We can also um, we have the possibility also to tune the frequency of uh, this cavity by a um, triplet or rod system, and uh, without impacting to, and we'll use uh, atom cube nanopositioners uh, to move uh, the system. So we have done some preliminary studies from the point of view of uh, uh, dark count rates. I'm not talking uh, about this. Uh, yeah, there's some more. Uh, once we have done, worked with these pilot experiments, we plan to move the devices in the uh, linear laboratories to use them to read out the uh, quarks uh, cavities. So we need more cooling power. So a latent cryogenesis is coming, and we are also uh, uh, refurbishing another dilution fridge. So. The uh, thing I didn't say about this device is not such a uh, straightforward uh, to use. You see, it's a very complex set of electronics you have to implement. It's a much simpler uh, design is this one, given by the Josephine Junction. And I close my talk as I'm exceeding the time uh, with this very, very interesting preliminary results that have been obtained in which uh, this single photomicrowave uh, detector is being used to read out a cavity. And the temperature of the cavity has been changed uh, uh, between 18 millikelvin to 54 millikelvin. And if you uh, calculate uh, the thermal photons that you expect to have inside a cavity, uh, things go well exactly as you expect. And uh, for details about these results, you can refer to Nicola Crescini, who took care of the uh, capability development and the data analysis. So I'll stop here, and I'm very sorry for being late. Uh, if you want in the uploaded uh, presentation, there are also some results about the uh, Frascati uh, laboratory, where they are starting to switch on things. Thank you. Uh, thanks, and sorry for being late. We have time for two questions. Two really good. Is it really good? A really bad question. Thank you for the great talk. Uh, at one of your early slides, you mentioned some paramagnetic impurities on the sapphire surfaces. 
Can you use those to place some constraints on the electron spin coupling, or is there too few of them? Yeah, that would be interesting, but it depends on the concentration, right? And uh, um, uh, yeah, this is that ultra pure sapphire that we, we bought. I, yeah, I don't remember, it's, this should be par, less than part per billion uh, paramagnetic impurities. Uh, but yeah, I don't have um, any, uh, I, I need to think about that. I don't have any idea how to place a limit with that. Okay, there's one other good question. Someone had a really good question over there. Was it you? Was it you? Okay. Uh, thanks for the really, really interesting talk. Uh, I saw somewhere in the beginning an early exclusion plot here. An early exclusion plot, I saw some peaks. Was this due to different aggression times, due to different sensitivity from different cavities? Because, yeah, yeah. So this is a single cavity tuned in a... Uh, with different integration times, per tuning step, or different cavities with uh, different sensitivities? Oh, that's uh, just uh, one cavity. Uh, so uh, it's, a, a, it's a dielectric cavity. So this plot has been obtained by uh, one hour integration time, different slots. The cavity width is 30 kilohertz, and 30 you can kilohertz. see that the uh, width that has been spanned here is almost uh, 100 kilohertz, more yeah. precisely it's 80 kilohertz. And, uh, and in red, it's a signal that we dispatch uh, without uh, uh, the, 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 the exclusion limit without uh, uh, any signal that you expect. And uh, yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Great. Let's thank Katarina again.